So Hollywood directors, what the hell do they know about making movies anyway, am I right? So the other day I got suggested this article telling me that Timothy Chalamet told us about one of his mystery heroes, who we won't name, who told him some advice years ago that he should never do hard drugs and that he should never ever be in a superhero movie. And he won't tell us who this is, you know, whether that's Denise Villeneuve, who I don't have an inkling it might be because he did also say that Marvel movies are turning us into zombies, but regardless, I think that this is a silly comment. And that's because, especially when we consider the fact that Timothy Chalamet is about to star in fucking Willy Wonka of all things. Fucking Willy Wonka, man. <laughs> like, he's kind of acting like, ugh, superhero movies, I won't touch that. But yeah, Willy Wonka, hell yeah. Like, that's not as cynical, like, that's not as just cash-grabbing, trying to jump onto some sort of recognizable brand type of film. Like, that's, it's pretty much the same shit. I don't know how he thinks that Willy Wonka is any more, like, respectable than an MCU film or whatever. It's just kind of a ridiculous idea in my mind. But regardless, this all kind of has to do with the fact of the thing that I really want to talk about, which is Ridley Scott, right? And the comments that he's made recently. Um, so I'll just read out the full comment, but it is about his new film, The Last Jewel, not making as much money as he was kind of hoping to. You know, it's kind of bombing a little bit, and this is what he said about it. I think what it boils down to, what we've got today, are the audiences who were brought up on these fucking cell phones. The millennium who do not ever want to be taught anything unless you're told it on a cell phone. Okay, so this is like the kind of big reveal here where Ridley Scott has to just tell everybody, hello. I'm an old man and I don't understand things. For one, Ridley Scott here is acting like phones are this inherently evil thing. But phones are more than anything, and, and the internet at large by the way, it's a tool. A tool that people need to learn to use. And you can listen to an infinite number of voices on that tool. You know, you, you gotta seek out for it yourself. The issue here is that really, if we're worried about a generation when it comes to this technology, believing every single thing that they read and spreading misinformation and stuff, that's, that's your generation, mate. That's really Scott's boomer generation. So it is kind of funny that he says that. Particularly as he kind of outs Gen Z as being like these fucking dumbasses and everything who just wanna be on TikTok all day if he knows what TikTok even is, but he kind of is like saying just this big generalization that we're all idiots that can't appreciate art, like his art specifically, which is automatically so much better because it's coming from him, I suppose, right? But what's most funny about this comment is that he says millennials, but who is actually talking about aren't even millennials. He's talking about Gen Z. Millennials are like 30 to 40 year olds, right? Really, he's talking about the younger generation, I'm assuming, and that's Gen Z, and it's just kind of a hilarious thing to make a mistake about. It's not that big of a deal, but it is just kind of a, another funny little element to his out of touch idea here. Something else that I wanted to say about this though is that he is acting like all of the young people, these people who can't appreciate his clearly cinematic masterpiece. Like obviously The Last Duel deserved all the money in the world and is the best thing ever, but it's us who are the problem. Surely, am I out of touch? No, it's the millennials or Gen Z or whoever who, who are the problem, right? But really, that that's not the case at all. For one, I think that you really can't blame an entire generation in such a broad way like this. It's such a generalization. He's acting like Gen Z is a bunch of dumbasses who can't appreciate art or whatever. But really, once you think about it, once you go down and down each generation, we only become more open-minded and artistic in that kind of way and, you know, politically correct as people of his generation typically complain about and all that kind of stuff. The Last Duel is a film that, sure, maybe doesn't generally apply to us in terms of having broad appeal, but I think The Last Duel, specifically if we're talking about any of the generations, like, The Last Duel is gonna work for some Gen Z people, it's gonna work for some young people, and The Last Duel is not gonna work for some older people. It goes both ways, and that's kind of the case with everything. As does with being a movie fan, a cinephile, somebody who is into the arts and all that kind of stuff, some people are very much into into that some people just don't give a shit and that's anybody from any generation you can't say that you know the younger people are just these idiots on phones who don't think or care about anything because what do you think they're looking at on their phones typically the things that they care about typically talking about I don't know media that we like and, and all that kind of stuff at least that's the case for me I do kind of take offense when one person from a certain generation will attack an entire other generation as if like we're all exactly the same and they aren't individuals. <laughs> but another thing to consider when it comes to The Last Duel's failure is actually that it's just not exactly a huge blockbuster like Ridley Scott seems to think it is. And it was never going to be. He's blaming young people for not seeing The Last Duel as if 
if it was made 20 years ago, it would be it would be doing gangbusters. It would be the biggest film that's ever been made ever, which I just don't see. The Last Duel is like this slow drama period piece about knights and kings and all that kind of stuff. And to general audiences, that's kind of a niche subject. That's kind of an area that is never going to make the most money, whether it came out now, whether it came out 20 years ago, whatever. This is a film that was never going to be like the biggest blockbuster in the world like Ridley Scott seems to think. I think that this kind of shows his arrogance of his expectations there where he's like obviously anything I touch is going to turn to gold but like no it was never that kind of movie. Ridley Scott here has really more so made just an expensive indie film. That's what The Last Jewel is from what I can tell anyway. I haven't actually seen the movie to be honest but that's not really the point. The point is, it's a slow drama. It was never going to be a huge blockbuster. The one discrepancy I can kind of think of is that in 2000, Gladiator came out. And that did like gangbusters, okay? That, that did great and everything. And that is kind of an easy comparison to make because of the genre. But that was more of an action film. As was like Lord of the Rings that came out the next year and everything. And I just don't think The Last Duel would have even competed with those if it came out the same year. I really don't think it's a generational problem. It's more of a trend thing. The whole Gladiator type of genre has kind of moved on you know or at least we've moved on from it much like westerns kind of phased out however many decades ago that was and we're really well into the superhero phase at the moment and you know maybe that's going to shift at some point soon maybe the the period piece dramas and stuff are going to come back into trending at some point Probably not, but it could happen, I suppose. It's hard to tell with these kinds of things. But it's very much more of a trend thing than anything else. More than you can just blame one generation for something or whatever. You, you can't. It's not like that. You can't just generalize like that. Look, I'm sure you can statistically figure out some sort of demographic that maybe it was less young people going. But really, you've got to look at the last duel overall worldwide when it comes to a lot of different factors. Like for one, we're still in a pandemic-based well, like maybe we're starting to kind of get to the end of that part. But here in Melbourne, we only just opened cinemas up in the past month or so. And I'm sure in a lot of other states and countries and other places and stuff, similar things can be said. I don't know about the states of every single place, but you know, I imagine we aren't the only ones that still aren't completely back to normal. And I feel like Ridley Scott is kind of ignoring this fact. Like we're not living in just a completely normal time, which also might be incentive for the older people to not have gone to the cinemas, you know? But really what we're talking about here is money and how much money it made. And the funny thing is money, you know, it, it's the same value whether it's coming from a young person or an old person. And if the film is failing, it's kind of failing on all fronts. It's not just failing because of one generation. You know, money talks and The Last Duel isn't making money because people just aren't that interested in it. And it's not because young people are idiots like Ridley Scott is implying, which I find highly offensive to be honest. I, I just, I think it's a ridiculous kind of thing to say. Like, it's just such a generalization and particularly when he kind of makes it about being about phones and shit, like that has any relevance. It's, it just comes off as silly and it shows out how out of touch he is and it kind of makes it funny. Like, I don't think anybody is kind of thinking on the same wavelengths that he is at the moment and I, I find it a little entertaining if I'm being honest. Another consideration for The Last Duel failing is that not only are we in this pandemic world and everything, but also what we have to worry about with Gen Z is not whether they're worried about The Last Duel specifically, but it's more that we, we as a generation, not me, but aren't as interested in going to the cinemas. That That's the real concern, I think. And maybe if Ridley Scott thought about it for a second, streaming services might have been the way to go for this one. It kind of suits that sort of film a, a little bit more. Because that's really the go-to with mainstream audiences and stuff. Most people aren't going to cinemas anymore. It's scary, but it's a fact. And we can't ignore that. Though, that being said, if you watch uh, Charts with Dan by Dan Merle, he's always going on about this optimistic viewpoint where you can see that the cinemas are starting to get a bit back to normal when it comes to the box office and all that stuff. So, that guy, he gives me a bit of hope. And then, this all goes into also what I wanted to just briefly discuss is the whole Martin Scorsese thing that he said a couple years ago now. I think that was in 2019. I think that was like two years ago now, which blows my mind a little bit. But his quote, as kind of everybody would know by now, uh, talking 
talking about Marvel movies, he said, I don't see them. Honestly, the closest I can think of them as well made as they are with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances is theme parks. Yes, he called them theme parks basically. And everybody took offense. And now I do want to talk a little bit about Marvel movies in general, the MCU and all that kind of stuff, superhero movies, and how a lot of people will just broadly say, hey, fuck him, they're all terrible, they're all brainless, they're all CGI crap. One thing I want to say right there, as per that last comment, CGI crap and whatever, I feel like a lot of people are like, it's just CGI, it's fake and I hate it and there was like no work done, they just clicked a button. That's bullshit. If you've ever animated anything, if you've ever edited a video, which I have many times, if you've ever done anything like that, computers aren't just these magical little fucking things that can just do anything you say just by clicking one little thing. Computers are a tool and you need to learn to use them well and they take many, many, many hours to learn and to work on every single thing that you work on depending on what that thing is. And when it comes to multi-million dollar CGI projects, fuck, that's gonna take, you don't even understand. I imagine there's probably, like the video game controversy that is always going on, I imagine there's probably crunch, crunch hours when it comes to CGI artists in like, who work for Marvel and studios like that. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's true, I, I'm just speculating there. But yeah, the point is, CGI also takes hard work. Um, but when it comes to talking about if uh, Marvel movies are like theme parks or whatever, Marvel movies are not exactly the same thing, again, as the movies that Scorsese makes. So obviously, you know, there's inherent differences when it comes to how you interpret the value of that art. But for me, I am kind of getting sick of people talking about superhero movies like they're inherently stupid. Like as if, you know, Captain America the Winter Soldier never said anything smart and it's only just punchy punchy crap. Like there's more to it. Sure, you get your dumber movies. Sure, you get, I don't know, Batman vs Superman, which is not an example of a great superhero movie. But then you get lots of different kind of shit. I feel like people do complain saying that they're all the same, but how is Birds of Prey the same as Thor? It's fucking not. If we're talking specifically about Marvel and the MCU though, how is Ant-Man the same as Thor? They're not. Like, sure, a lot of these movies do go through a similar formula, but I do feel like, as of years ago, they've still been making pretty big risks. I mean, it was kind of a big risk from the very get-go to have the kind of end credit scenes teasing things like the Avengers before they even knew if they were going to be able to get there, which they obviously did, and that's, like, incredible and everything. But then they, you know, they probably didn't have to, but Marvel kept risking things. They brought out Guardians of the Galaxy. They brought out the aforementioned Ant-Man. They didn't have to bring out characters like this. These are odd characters that we, well, I definitely didn't know about before seeing these films. And now they're household names. That's kind of an incredible achievement, I think. Anyway, I don't think the MCU is like non-artistic and it's just crappy shit cash cow movies that they're just chucking out without a care. That's DC. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't believe that's true either. DC is trying to do something. I think they failed a little bit, but at least they had somewhat of a vision. But when it comes to the MCU, like, I think that there are vastly different movies within the MCU, and I do think that a lot of them are much better than they even probably need to be. When it comes to the people who judge them so harshly, I think those people are the people who are just not giving them a chance and not seeing them anyway and don't really know what they're talking about. Scorsese himself admits I don't see them. So don't talk about it, man. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Hey, I'm just editing here and I just wanted to say something else. So even if superhero movies are more like roller coasters or theme parks or whatever the hell, even if that's the case, there's something to be said about there being a place and time, you know, like that can be appropriate for that kind of thing. Maybe you want a theme park ride or whatever. What's so bad about a theme park? You know what I mean? I, I love theme parks. Like, going to Disney World a few years ago, one of the best times of my life. It's such a good memory. And, you know, if Marvel movies are the equivalent of that in the kind of film medium, well, I, I think that that can be appropriate if that's the sort of thing you're looking for. No, a lot of Marvel movies aren't going to hit you in the feels quite like, I don't know, something by who, Denise Villeneuve or something, or one of these directors complaining about all this shit, maybe not. No, maybe it's not going to hit quite as hard in some sort of political way. Maybe it's not saying something quite as deep as some Martin Scorsese movie or whatever. But there's a time and a place, and I think Marvel movies are fun, and I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that or stupid about that. And I just get annoyed when people are like, Fans of Marvel are dumbasses and whatever. I just think it's a ridiculous generalization again. I'm just sick of these generalizations just 
let people like what they like, you know? Kind of like that meme that I think was drawn by um, that Adam Tots guy on Instagram. Shh, let people enjoy things. <laughs> Just... You know? Okay, and something else that I want to talk about that is kind of irrelevant, I admit, but I, I saw this meme this morning, okay? And I... Look, look, there it is. Woo! <laughs> and look, it's a bit outdated. It's talking about 2019, but here it's saying that uh, there were movies in the theaters in 2007, including There Will Be Blood, No Country for Old Men, The Assassination of Jesse James, blah, 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 and Zodiac. And this is kind of trying to say, oh, isn't 2007 amazing and brilliant and whatever? And then there's below that the 2019 one, which has some animated movie about talking animals, some dumbed down remake of taxi driver and the 278th superhero movie and whatever and the meme is all like oh yeah 2019 fuck this or you know we can say it for years after that as well i'm sure this person would probably think the same for for the following years that it's just as bad and whatever but regardless like it's acting like yeah it's just terrible now but this is such a stupid comparison here because you know what else came out in 2007 norbit came out in 2007. Epic Movie came out in 2007. Okay, like, these are not the same things. Like, for one, There Will Be Blood and No Country for Old Man and Zodiac and especially Jesse James. These aren't blockbusters. Sure, they have some notable names here. We remember them all for being great films, particularly in There Will Be Blood and No Country for Old Men. Those are very respected films that we definitely still talk about to this day. But they weren't the biggest blockbusters of those years. You know, Pirates of the Caribbean and, I don't know, did a fast some Furious movie come out that year. That kind of shit. Those were the movies in 2007. You know, Ratatouille, I think, came out in 2007. Those were the movies that were making money. Those were the blockbusters that we should really be comparing to the blockbusters of 2019 here. Like, it's just, it's an unfair comparison here as they don't actually name anything, but you know, you, you can tell what they're suggesting here. Another thing to mention is that 2019 also had films like Parasite. Also had films like Marriage Story. And Joker is one of them that they complain about that I think is a good film. Us came out that year. There's plenty of quality stuff that came out a few years ago in 2019. And whether you agree or not with my examples, that's not really the point. Like, there are going to be other examples that you do agree with. 2019 was not like this villainous year, nor is, you know, the following 2020, 2021, or 2022. They are not the villainous years that are just horrible. Good stuff comes out every single year, as does shit stuff <laughs> every single year. And you can't compare blockbusters to indies and all this stuff. Like, they're warping this reality they w the way they want to see. Anyway, but this is me complaining about this random ass meme of all things. So maybe this is all completely irrelevant. I am just becoming kind of angry man yelling in a room at the moment. <laughs> but I don't know. I guess I'm just... The whole point of this video is just that I'm getting sick of generalization. I'm getting sick of Ridley Scott generalizing an entire generation. I'm getting sick of this random meme <laughs> generalizing years of movies. I'm getting sick of people generalizing Marvel and superhero movies in general. You got to take each thing as they come. You can't just say this entire thing is bad. Honestly, good stuff, bad stuff, cheesy blockbusters, indie stuff, everything, whether it came out 20 years ago, now, longer, whatever, good and bad stuff came out every single year. Good and bad stuff come out from superhero movies every single year. And, you know, young people and old people like and dislike different things depending on each individual. We really should stop generalizing like this, like Ridley Scott has, and just sa saying that, oh, it's Gen Z's fault, even though he called us millennials, and all this kind of stuff. It's just, it's all silly. That's really my main point here. I think that he has proven himself to be kind of out of touch, but also this kind of Mount Rushmore of directors who are complaining about all of the Marvel movies and all of the young people movies and, you know, all this sort of stuff are starting to just kind of annoy the shit out of me, to be honest. <laughs> I understand that there is room for independent cinema, and I see plenty of that stuff myself. Um, and I also understand, though, that just because it's a Marvel movie or a blockbuster, that it doesn't necessarily have to be, like, anger-inducing. You know, good stuff can come from that sort of genre as well, if you ask me. I think it's ignorant to completely ignore either um, spectrum. Anyway, that's about all I have to say. Sorry I kind of trailed out at the end here. I didn't have anything written down apart from just what those directors particularly said. I just wanted to chuck something out quick and say some of my thoughts. I don't know, if this was incoherent, let me know. I'm gonna get out of here, do the things please. Bye.